Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this quick video I'm going to check the Skyzone SteadyView X 5.8 GHz receiver module. This version includes both SteadyView X receiver module and the ground station kit which is going to enable you to connect the video receiver to every type of display which is equipped with an auxiliary video module. You can also purchase the SteadyView X receiver individually and you can also get this board which is going to upgrade your existing model and add the Express LRS backpack option. In this package, in addition to the SteadyView X receiver which comes pre-assembled inside the ground station kit, you're getting Skyzone omnidirectional and patch antennas, a 3.5 mm auxiliary AV cable, an XT60 to 5.5 by 2.1 mm barrel connector DC cable, and different type of covers which are used for mounting the SteadyView receiver on its own on Fetchhawk and Skyzone goggles. In terms of features and specs, first of all, the main highlight of this video receiver is that it is intended to fix the problem that many users reported with the previous version of the SteadyView receiver where they experienced a rolling screen which is a result of the merging mechanism which takes two signals like the rapid fire video receiver and merging them into one in order to improve the video quality. So Skyzone improved the hardware of the SteadyView receiver and now this issue is resolved. As for the ground station model, on its right side you can find a 3.5mm auxiliary port which only supports video, so pay attention that audio is not supported. Powering it up is done using this DC plug. The supported DC input voltage is between 6.5 to 26 volts, so you can power it directly with between 2 to 6 S batteries. The model also features a built-in fan which can be turned on or off using the system menu. Over here you can find this wheel which will allow you to adjust the different settings. Over here you can find two SMA antenna connectors for the two antennas. You can also choose which antenna is going to be in use using the system settings. And over here you can find a USB Type-C port which is used for upgrading the firmware of the video receiver and also upgrading the firmware of the Express LRS backpack module. In addition, the weight of the ground station model including the SteadyView X receiver is 49 grams and its outer dimensions are 31.6 by 60.8 by 26.3 millimeters. In case you need to disassemble the SteadyView X receiver from the ground station kit, it is done by unscrewing these two Phillips screws from the back of the ground station module. Then you need to lift this part carefully as the fan is connected to the main board. And after that, you'll need to simply detach the receiver from the ground station board, which by the way can support every type of Fetchhawk compatible video receiver. And you'll need to disconnect the JST connector that connects the fan to the main board. And after that, you'll be able to mount the video receiver inside the model bay of your goggles. Now, in case you already have a SteadyView receiver for your Skyzone goggles, and you want to update it to the latest available version in order to solve the rolling image issue and also add the Express LRS capability, all you need to do is to remove this upper model from your receiver model and replace it with this board, which as I've mentioned earlier, is available separately. As you can see, this model also features a JST connector for the external fan, but it doesn't feature an OLED screen, so you'll need to use either your Skyzone goggles or Express LRS in order to configure it. As for using the video receiver, it's very simple. First, let's power it up. As you can see, it powers up very quickly. Now we can switch between the available eight channels by 
short pressing the roller wheel button and just scrolling it to the top or to the bottom. Similarly, after pressing it again, you'll be able to switch between the six available bands and by long pressing the roller wheel button, you'll be able to enter the main menu. Then over here, you can initiate a search, which is going to scan all the available frequencies and find the best channel. Next, you can select the mix mode, which is the algorithm which is used for merging the two signals. You can set it to mix one, which is the default option, mix two, mix three, or you can turn it off. I recommend to start with the default option, mix one, and then in case you're experiencing problems to try the other settings. Here, under antenna select mode, you'll be able to set the antenna which is going to be in use to diversity, so both antennas are going to be in use. You can also set it to VRXA, which is the top antenna, and VRXB, which is the bottom antenna. I recommend to set it to diversity, and only in case you are using special equipment for long range flights, and I mean extremely long range flights, then you should set it to VRXA or VRXB, depending on the antenna that is in use. Under stabilized time, you'll be able to set the stabilized time, which is used for synchronizing the video signal when the mix mode is in use. The default setting is eight, and I recommend to set it to the default one. And again, if you are experiencing problems, set it to 12 or five seconds, depending on the issue that you are having. Under OSD mode, you'll be able to select the elements that are going to be displayed on your FB feed. So you can set it to lock RSI and frequency, which is the default option. And you can also select between other elements or completely turn off the OSD. Under menu style, you can switch between two styles just for the colors of the screen. So here you can see the second style. And again, this is the first one. Under fan, you can turn on or off the built-in fan. It is quite loud. So now, as you can hear, the fan is turned on. And now it is turned off. In case you are flying in a hot environment, I recommend to turn on the fan. And in case you are in a cold area, turn it off. Next, you can perform a calibration, which is going to calibrate the RSSI that is going to be displayed on your OSD. So you need to perform two steps. First, you need to turn off a nearby VTX, and you also need to set the VRX to the same frequency of the VTX. Press this button, and after that, you will need to turn on the VTX, and after that, it is going to be calibrated. Now it is going to fail because I don't have any nearby VTXs turned on. So again, set the VRX and the VTX to the same frequency, turn off the VTX, initiate the first step, turn on the VTX, and then initiate the second step. Next, under Express LRS, you can turn it on, and then you'll be able to use Express LRS in order to configure the VRX, which I'm going to show you in a moment. You can turn off this feature, you can set it to upgrade, and then you will use this USB Type-C port in order to connect the VRX to your computer. And using the Express LRS Configurator tool, you'll be able to upgrade the model. And I'm also going to show it to you in a moment, but after you select this tab, you will need to repair the VRX as it's not going to reboot itself. Under Factory Reset, you can reset the module to its default options. And under status, you can see the version of your firmware and hardware. As for setting up the frequency of the VRX using Express LRS, all you have to do is to head over to the Express LRS menu. Make sure that Express LRS is turned on. Select the bind option. And then on your radio controller, head over to the Express LRS Lua script. Press bind. 
Now, as you can see, the bind is successful. And then using the VTX admin, we can set the frequency of the video receiver. So for example, now I'm going to set it to F5 and after pressing send to VTX, the frequency was set to 5820. Now I'm going to set it back to F1. Over here, you also have power levels, which are used for controlling the power level of the VTX. So the highlight of this feature is that it can also be used for controlling a VTX. So when changing the frequency, the frequency is going to be the same on both VTX and VRX. Personally, I think that this feature is not going to be useful for most users, but still it's nice to have it. As for upgrading the firmware of the Express LRS kit, as I've mentioned earlier, you have to select the upgrade option in the Express LRS menu. And after that, using the Express LRS configurator tool under the backpack tab, you'll be able to find the steady view via rigs and flash it with the latest firmware. So overall, from what I can tell after testing it out for a few weeks, the SteadyView X receiver by Skyzone seems to perform very well. It can be a good and also cheaper alternative to the rapid fire module. And it can be a great option in case you need to add an external video receiver module to goggles or screens that support an auxiliary video input, for example, like the DJI V2 goggles. I'm going to wrap up this video with a side-by-side -side comparison of the Skyzone SteadyView and Immersion LC rapid fire modules. Just keep in mind that this side-by-side -side comparison was not performed under ideal conditions as I wasn't using the same type of antennas. The modules were not exactly next to each other as the goggles were on my head and the ground station was placed on a backpack next to me and I wasn't also using the same type of DVR as the PowerPlay DVR was connected to the ground station in order to capture the video. I apologize that this side-by-side -side comparison is not ideal, but I simply no longer have the equipment that allows me to compare different types of video receivers. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. I wish you all happy flying, and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.